You know, I think I'm going anti-woke on this channel. I mean, <laughs> would I lose uh, would I lose a lot of subscribers if I just started calling them Redskins again all the time? I don't know. Uh, I'm almost thinking of uh, putting that to the test and seeing what happens here. Because I love this mug. My, uh, uh, one of my uncles, uh, through marriage, got me this mug, and I have enjoyed this mug, uh, over the years, and, uh, it's getting famous, well, probably more famous than me, because, you know, it, it's been in my videos, and, uh, it has held, um, probably a million cups of coffee in its lifetime, so... Cheers to the Washington Redskins. Okay, let's get into it. So Ron Rivera, he understands that just like Eminem, he's got one shot and he better make it a good one because we know that it's, it's just on the horizon that we're going to have a new owner coming in and Ron Rivera knows that if he doesn't make this work this year, he is out. There, there is no, there, there is no dream. What was the right word to say on this? There's no illusion that Ron Rivera thinks that he's going to remain in Washington no matter what happens. That. This owner is going to give him another five years to work this out. He realizes he's on borrowed time and that everything he's built up until this point is going to be all for nothing. Well, maybe not, but it's all going to be all for nothing for him if he doesn't produce. And really, it probably depends upon the level of success. I mean, it's it's not only just going to be success and it's going to be your interpretation. It's going to be the owner's interpretation as to what success means in Washington this year as to the fate of one Ron Rivera. Now, folks, we all know there's a lot of people who think the way that I do. We love Ron Rivera as the man. You know, some of you folks who go to the games quite a bit, um, you've gotten to meet Ron Rivera. You love him as a man. He is he's a man of integrity. He is what I consider, he probably carries himself as like, you know, like a military type of, of person. Uh, he, he does what he says. He's, he's just, he's... A guy who demands respect um, in, a, in a different way that Joe Gibbs was like Joe Gibbs was the same type of guy but he wasn't like a military ish type of guy but he was the type of guy that you respect it so much that you you have I mean it's just it's just one of those guys that you respect because he was so successful for one thing but he just he was smart he 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 knew how to put the right people in place he knew how to build a team well it wasn't all on him he had he surrounded himself with with uh, the perfect people in place he already had Bobby Beathard there with him who really helped him out a, a great deal but with Ron Rivera you know man of integrity love the guy but I know there's been some questionable things with him as a coach. And there are times where there's been some head scratchers. You know, I've made all sorts of excuses for Ron Rivera at times. I'm like, come on, guys. When everybody else is, like, ready to, to fire him, ready to, to pack his bags and, and kick him out the door, I'm like, you guys need to pump your brakes. And then there are times where, like, I got nothing. <laughs> I, got, I I don't know why he did that. And so I recognized last year that 
in year three, you got to put up or shut up. And we did not produce the year that we should have produced. We all can agree on that. The Washington Commanders should have went to the playoffs. Okay, They should have went to the playoffs. They should have won at least one playoff game. They had the defense to get them into the playoffs. They had a lot on offense. They had a lot of weapons on offense. The only thing they struggled with was quarterback. And, again, had they had Taylor Heineke playing in that Cleveland game, we probably would have been talking about Washington maybe being one and done in the playoffs. I don't know, but at least making the playoffs. But they didn't do it. You know, Ron Rivera puts Carson Wentz in, and suddenly the Washington Commanders are out of the playoffs, and now we're talking about Sam Howe going into season 2023 as QB1, or at least the possibility. So, Ron Rivera knows that if last year was now or never, he just got a mulligan because of the ownership change. And he realizes now, he this is not his first rodeo. He's been through an ownership change before, and he came out on the losing end of that deal. So he knows if he doesn't produce, and not only that, if he can't take this team deep into the playoffs this season, he's out. And shoot, he may be out anyway, even if he takes them deep into the playoffs. Because the new ownership may see something that they're like, you know what, this team could have been a Super Bowl team had we had this other coach. That we could see that Ron Rivera did not make good decisions here, here, and here. And that was just enough to change the fate of this team going from, you know, barely missing the NFC championship game to winning the Super Bowl. Who knows? I don't know. Once the new ownership comes in and situates themselves, I don't know how hardcore they're going to be. But I do know that... More times than not, new ownership's going to want to have their guys in place. And I don't think anybody's going to be safe. It's not just Ron Rivera. It's Martin Mayhew, Marty Herney. It's Jason Wright. It's everybody. Nobody's safe. Nobody's safe with an ownership change. And, And it's true in any business. New ownership comes in. They want to bring in their own people. They want to redo everything. They want to they want to clean the the stink off of what has been wrong with the organization for years and they want to put their own stamp on things. Now, I'm not saying that Ron Rivera is the stink because I think he is really truly I know you have some boo birds out there who are going to be like, "No, he's been terrible." you probably have not been alive long enough to see the last 25 plus years. Ron Rivera has done some great things for this team. You know, culturally, he's, he's done some really good things for this team. He has brought in some good players. And he has, he has changed some culture. He's done some good things for this team, folks. It's just not translated to enough wins on the field, and that's where it it bites them in the in the backside. And we all know that that in the end it comes down to wins and losses. And I get that, but yeah, I, I just um, you know Ron Rivera, he's got one chance. He's got one chance. He's got to prove it, and he knows he's out. And folks. I hope he succeeds because this could be the first time. Well, is it? Is it going to be the first time in NFL history 
that new ownership comes in and retains the head coach who has not really produced anything to say, hey, I'm worthy of an extension for my contract and sticks with the guy. I mean, even when um, Jerry Jones came in and took over for the Dallas Cowboys ownership, he fired the legendary Tom Landry. I mean, that shocked the world when he did that. Now, provided the Cowboys kind of started going downhill after the early 80s, but he fired Tom Landry, <clears throat> brought in a college head coach. Everybody thought, man, this, this owner is crazy. And then he built a dynasty there for, for the 90s. But, you know, that's just, that's just the nature of the business, the nature of the game. Folks, let me know what you think in the comment section below, please. Like this video. Get this video out, let it share it out to everybody else, get the word out. Support the Washington Football Maniacs by subscribing to this channel. Uh, support me any way you can. And with that said, I will see you, guess what, in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.